Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is TND, and we're going to speak today about RFID, the future of the world, if people allow it. So please sit back, watch, listen, and enjoy our presentation. Radio frequency identification, RFID, symbolizes the future of technology. Through the use of RFID tags or transponders and a reader, it allows for automatic identification of one or perhaps many discreetly different items, such as reading every item on a pallet that gets processed in the Walmart warehouse. Along with this, RFID tags can have many other functions, from containing information on medical records to sending a signal that unlocks a safe to even containing a human or pet's vital information. In order to allow RFID to fully flourish and explore its limitless potential, scientists must first address the security issues RFID faces. Denial of service attacks, illicit tracking, and privacy invasion, which could lead to identity theft. Denial of service, or DOS attacks, occur when a user or a system overloads a target with some form of data consuming the target's resources, slowing it down considerably, and eventually shutting it down. Like these systems, RFID is very susceptible to DOS attacks, and this presents a huge issue to those advocating the further advancement of RFID. When RFID attacks communicate with the reader, they have a range of frequencies with which they can communicate. This function was created so that upon encountering some form of interference, the RFID tag and reader could change frequencies and maintain constant communication. However, Scientists in Australia discovered that if one could interfere with every frequency in the RFID tag's range, then it would not be able to communicate with the reader. By essentially jamming their signal, attackers could do substantial damage to those dependent on it. For instance, Walmart requires that its top 100 supply chain partners use RFID tags on their products. If a cyber attacker committed a DOS attack on these tags, the tags on the inventory pallets would not be able to communicate with the reader when they run through the scanner. An attack like this could substantially slow Walmart's supply chain network, costing it a significant amount of money and time. Even if this only occurs for a short period of time, events like this could prove fatal to an unstable organization. Like DOS attacks, illicit tracking represents a major problem for RFID. Since with RFID, an object sends a signal and a reader interprets it, anyone with a proper reader can identify that object. Therefore, anyone, as long as they have that proper reader, can read RFID tags that don't necessarily belong to them. This could pose serious threats in many different aspects. For example, if a potential robber wants to find the most lucrative target, he or she could simply take an RFID reader and scan people's cars and houses. If a valuable item has an RFID tag, then the potential robber would retrieve its signal with his or her reader, giving knowledge of what the house or car contains without having to enter it. Illicit tracking can not only lead to theft of one's tangible property, but can lead to a much more disastrous crime identity theft. Even before the advent of RFID, the world faced many problems with identity theft. Now with RFID, the problems could exponentially increase for one primary reason. A person may embed an RFID chip with all their personal information on it, allowing someone, like an illicit tracking, to obtain this person's information without his or her knowledge. Along with this, any card with an RFID tag can have its information stolen and duplicated. This could result in someone else creating a duplicate access card or credit card in your name. Some companies attempt to combat this by encrypting their signals, such as ExxonMobil with their SpeedPass. But due to cost limitations, most companies have to resort to using weaker encryption known as proprietary encryption. Any experienced hacker can easily crack through this encryption, however, allowing easy access to one's personal information. In order to prevent many of these security or privacy issues, it is necessary for all retailers and users of RFID to agree on a standard method. It is very common for retailers and users to design newer and better ways of preventing illicit tracking, denial of service attacks, or identity theft for their specific organization, but a standard across all users would make the RFID technology more attractive. To prevent thieves from being able to discover the total inventory of one store, product-specific codes will be embedded in all chips so that only information about one product can be discovered if the thief had the intelligence of being able to crack the code and read the product RFID tag. Another technique being tested and implemented would require an encryption device to encrypt the signal being emitted from the chip. The encryption device would encrypt the signal leaving the chip and the reader would be able to decode the message. 
This technology would stop any outsider from reading the tags from a distance, unless, of course, they had a specific algorithm programmed within their reader to decipher the chip. Other ideas include deactivating the chip as the customer leaves the store with the purchased items. The problem this solution creates is that the item cannot be returned without restoring the chip's code. The final possibility is to implement a soft blocker. After purchasing an item, the customer can enter a code or swipe a card at the register that would not allow the RFID tag to be read by any other reader except the retail department of the particular store. With the amazing capabilities currently offered, and those capabilities yet to be discovered, RFID could serve as the medium that carries society into the next golden age of technology. However, with the current security flaws, if they are not fixed, RFID could usher in a dark age of economic chaos and more vision terrorism.